Hello once again, AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're going to take a look at our example 5, part B, from topic 1015. We're dealing with finding power series of slightly more complicated transcendental functions. And in this case, we're going to be looking at tangent of x. Now, tangent of x may not look very complicated, but it's a little bit more intricate to develop than just, say, basically your sine or your cosine type of uh, power series. So let's take a look at this here. Our power, our problem reads, find the first three non-zero terms in the Maclaurin series for tangent of x. Now, as I've been saying in my previous videos, you could certainly develop this from scratch by taking several derivatives of tangent. The problem with that is by the time you get to the second and the third derivative of tangent, things can start to get pretty rough going. And as you can see, the first derivative of tangent is secant squared, right? The derivative of secant squared isn't so bad as long as you pull off that chain rule. But then from that point on, I wouldn't wish those derivatives on my worst enemy. Even though you only have to find three derivatives in this case, um, it's probably, or even two derivatives probably would get the job done in this case. It's probably not worth our while to do these for the problems like in general, let's say, uh, especially if we had to find an actual um, uh, more robust series of five or, or more terms and possibly its actual um, equation or its expression. So what you're going to do is do exactly what your trig teacher has always told you to do whenever you face the tangent of x. And you're going to use sine of x divided by cosine of x. Those are two very well-behaved known series that you can easily manipulate by way of a division. Now, each of those two series are ones that you might already know. I put little hearts by those to indicate that those are two that you should memorize going into the AP Calc exam. If you don't have them memorized, it's not the end of the world because they're both fairly easy to develop, but that's just more work and more time that you're going to have to spend in a problem that's a little bit more advanced like this one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the sine function and divide it by the cosine. And so that sine function is what you see here in the blue box. Now take note of a couple of things. I would prefer not to use the factorial notation because it's just going to bog us down with the arithmetic. And so that three factorial, of course, is six. And the five factorial, a little bit tougher here, is going to be 120. Now you're not going to have to write any other terms beyond the third term here, which is good news because it will lighten the load of this uh, algebraic division. Now we're going to divide that by the outside uh, expression here, which is the cosine. And again, I'm going to translate any factorial back into its numerical equivalency. So that 4 factorial, of course, is 24. Now let the division begin. You're going to ask yourself, what would you multiply the 1 by out in front to give you an x to the first? And of course, that answer is x to the first. And in typical division fashion, you will then multiply x through by each of these three terms. That, of course, will give you x minus x cubed over 2 and plus x to the fifth over 120. The last thing in this step, you're going to subtract, just like we would do with any division problem. So we would subtract these results. We do get a zero in our first spot. That was the whole point. And then in the second spot, we might want to be a little careful. Maybe I'll do a little side work here. I essentially have negative x cubed over 6 plus x cubed over 2. So you want to be very careful so that we can pull off this uh, arithmetic correctly. It looks like the common denominator is going to be a 6. Now we kind of deal with the algebra part. We have negative x cubed plus 3x cubed. That's going to result in 2x cubed over 6, which of course would reduce to x cubed over 3. Same thing is going to be done here. For my next term, I have uh, uh, essentially um, um, 
Oops, I think I made a mistake here. Yeah, you're probably wondering, what was he doing? <laughs> this should be a 24, right? Otherwise, those are going to cancel. So sorry if you are you got kind of distracted by that mistake. I'll go back here, you guys. X times X to the fourth over 24 is X to the fifth over 24. I think I was looking at this 120 and thinking, oh my gosh, I got to deal with him. So I am going to have to deal with him, but uh, now is the time. So I have an X to the fifth over 120 minus an X to the fifth over 24. Now, the common denominator here is 120. That's what my mind was so kind of like preoccupied with because 24 is a factor of 120. 24 times 5, in fact. And so this is just 1X to the fifth minus 5X to the fifth, which that should give you negative 4X to the fifth over your 120. Now, when we reduce that, and I would highly recommend that you do so, you would end up with a negative x to the fifth over 30. And notice now we only have two terms that we have to fight, and we actually have a third of our answer. We have one of our three terms. We're about to get the next term here, though. And so we continue this process, and we ask ourselves, what would you multiply 1 by to get x to the third over 3? And the answer to that question is, of course, x to the third over 3. Now we'll multiply again. x to the third over 3 times 1, of course, is x to the uh, third over 3. And then I'll make sure I do this one correctly. x to the third over 3 times negative x squared over 2. I'm going to multiply. So I add my exponents to get a 5, and I multiply my denominators to get a 6. Now we're going to subtract here. We, of course, end up with our zero that we would expect. I won't write that necessarily. And then I've got basically negative x to the fifth over 30 right here plus an x to the fifth over 6. So if we can get our common denominator here, it looks like it's going to be 30. I'm going to have to multiply my x to the fifth by 5. And then that's going to end up resulting in 4x to the fifth over 30. And at that point, I could reduce to 2x to the fifth over 15. And we really have this problem taken care of at this point because all that's need to be done now is just revisit our multiplication plan and say, what would you multiply 1 by to get a 2x to the fifth over 15? which of course is 2x to the fifth over 15. And there's no point in continuing your division because you have provided what the problem has asked for. Now, if you circle this, that would be perfectly acceptable, say on the AP exam. You could also say something along the fact that this function, maybe I'll go ahead and name that function. He was called f of x, right? He deserves a name. Now, I would stay very clear of putting an equal sign here because what we're writing is not an equivalency. It is an approximation, right? This is essentially a, a fifth-degree polynomial replication of our tangent of x series, which we know is infinite. Now, what I'd like to do is kind of use my TI-inspired calculator to double-check this result to make sure that everything is accurate. So here we are, I've got the software. If you recall, we have the feature on our calculator that is the Taylor command. I can then enter the function that I'm considering, which is, whoops, tangent of x. The arguments are independent variable x, the number of terms, well, is it really the number of terms? This is a common misconception. If I put three there, What's this, what the calculator is going to do is it's going to just spit out the third degree term. So if you do use the Inspire, it's very important that you understand that this particular parameter is the, uh, the highest degree that you want out of your uh, series approximation. And so basically that kind of means that I'd have to know a little bit about the answer before I could probably check it with the calculator. But anyhow, boom, there it is. That matches what we had on paper. And now you guys know how to find a McLaurin series for tangent of X. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful and we'll see you next time.